Welcome to this worship service. My name is Christine Henderson, one of the chaplains with Wesley Mission Queensland. I have asked two of the other chaplains, Malcolm Scanlon and Pam Batson, to help me with this service. Today, we continue our journey through the season of Pentecost. We light the Christ candle to remind us that Christ is the light of the world and in him there is no darkness. Our call to worship. O rushing wild spirit of God, pour out the fire of your love upon us. O rushing wild spirit of God, may your breeze bring health and wholeness. May your spirit storm the earth with mercy and grace. O rushing wild spirit of God, pour out the fire of your love upon us. We sing together our first hymn, Love Divine.
Let us come before God in our prayer of invocation and confession. Let us pray. Jesus, your call to a new way of being and living resonates in our soul and opens us to hear more. We have so much to learn from you, spirit of wisdom, to live in a faith-filled life. God of all, come, speak with us now. Let us hear your words as if for the first time. Inspire us, guide us, teach us. We pray for joy, for we are your people, living in a faithful life with you. Hallelujah. We confess our sins. We come now to confess our sins. Jesus, show us your way. We have been frustrated and irritated and not shown your patience. We have been disbelieving of some and disregarding of others and realize that we have burdened them with hurtful judgment. Our generosity has come with expectations and our forgiveness has not always been unconditional. Place your yoke across our life so that we may find balance as we carry what is required. Guide us and teach us as we need to learn from you. Speak into our hearts the word of life so that we may live in your way of love. Amen. The Declaration of Forgiveness. The spirit of wisdom speaks into our lives. Listen carefully, listen deeply. Take moments to hear her voice, for God goes before us and knows our needs. Jesus' word offers insight and truth. Meditate in prayer and allow God to lead you. All shall be well. Amen. Our next hymn is Great God, Your Spirit Like the Wind.
Our reading from the New Testament is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and then 13 to 25. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you be, will be destroyed by each other. So I say, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Life is all about choices, many of which are the simple ones that we make day to day, moment by moment, even without being aware of them. From when we wake in the morning, until we close our eyes in sleep again at night, we are involved in making choices. Will I have tea or coffee for breakfast today? Will I go on that bus trip? Will I phone that cousin who's been ill? And of course, we look back on our lives. We can identify when we do the significant turning points at which the choice we made shaped what came next, and perhaps shaped the whole direction of our lives from that point on, all because of a choice we made at a particular time and place. Now, the human mind is designed to weigh options, to analyze, to make considered decisions, often subconscious agenda like the need to survive and thrive, or the desire for companionship, or the avoidance of pain can honestly be identified as the actual prompters for the choices we make. So in addressing this very basic human process of choice making, what was the Apostle Paul actually wanting to say? when he wrote this letter to the young Christian church in Galatia. 
There must have been quite an interesting backstory to this correspondence. What had they been doing to have all those examples of sinful behavior listed? He certainly provides them with explicit detail they can't ignore, identifying behaviors that are to be condemned for being antisocial, immoral, or psychologically oppressive, fits of rage, jealousy, drunkenness, debauchery, the list goes on. Similarly, he goes on to paint a beautiful picture of the types of behavior that he and God approve, describing the positive power of their effect on human relationships and group dynamics, forbearance, kindness, gentleness, self-control, love. Perhaps in setting out all these options, the choices we need to make when deciding how and why we should behave, in such precise, particular ways, Paul is wanting to make sure we know the detail and can't kid ourselves that we don't know good behavior from bad. He certainly makes sure we know what our options are, our choices. Yet is that Paul's central point? These descriptions are really helpful, but when we step back, we realize Paul doesn't actually require us to identify the many individual choices we make every day and make sure we get it right every time. No, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Paul is saying that we are free. We're not weighed down by having to get it right in the detail of our lives. Instead, we are released to open our hearts and minds freely to make one open-ended, empowering choice. Paul's voice is encouraging. Don't be a slave to all those oppressive, self-focused desires, he writes, but allow yourself to be made free by the Spirit of God. So the one significant choice and approach informs everything we do and say. Walk in and with the Spirit of God and the rest will fall into place. We can use our freedom, our daily, moment-by-moment, choice-making human nature to love. As he writes, for the entire law is fulfilled in one command, to love your neighbor as yourself. This really is an empowering, one-size-fits-all choice. It's the one that comes with the uplifting flavor of freedom, human free will given full reign, but it also comes with a secret power. Actually, it needs this secret power, which is the presence of the Spirit of God. The promise is that as we open our hearts and minds to the Spirit of God, as we walk by, in, and with the Spirit of God freely, then all the rest, all those other moment-by-moment -moment choices, like between, between being impatient and being patient, between being unkind or kind, all these quite exhausting daily choices line up in orderly fashion behind this one empowering choice. Our freely chosen trust that the Spirit of God can and will inspire and enable us to love one another as ourselves. One choice. One choice that we simply make over again each day, assured that when we walk by the Spirit, when we are led by the Spirit, all our other decisions and choices will be made in the spirit of that love. One choice empowered and encouraged by the actual Spirit of God with and within us, keeping us company 
daily. That's our secret power, feeding into the detail of our daily choices so that we fulfill the entire law in one command, to love. Amen. We'll now sing together the hymn, Seek Ye First. We now come to the time of praying for other people. During our prayer, we will light candles. Let us pray. Jesus, friend and spirit, comforter, please hear our prayers today. We see the sadness in so many eyes especially in the eyes of those whose hearts are troubled by grief. In stressed and agitated workers who are tired. Managers who struggle as their values are challenged. Small business owners trying to realise their dreams. Education and health workers who tirelessly serve. We pray for our society, where we have so much wealth that is distributed unevenly. Let our voices not be silenced for just and equitable working conditions. 
for support for the unemployed and those who need support. For those living with a disability and those with chronic illness. For those in war zones, the displaced refugees across the globe and in our midst living with grief for what they have lost and seeking a new life where they can feel safe. May we extend your love and offer support in any way that we're able as neighbours and faithful people. We pray for governing leaders far and near, that they are filled with values of truth and justice, to understand people's needs rather than to impose their own thoughts and, on decisions. May they listen carefully to the voices of community and church leaders who speak up for the most vulnerable in our land. May our faith be a quiet and welcoming space in the busyness of daily life, so that we may all find peace through the power of, the whole, of your spirit and the indwelling presence of your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in singing our final hymn, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story.
and our word of mission and blessing. People of God, be filled with certainty. God loves you and is with you. Jesus is your companion each day and wisdom spirit breathes into your life, filling you with the fruit of the spirit. Live with joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As you live in this way, you will also receive. It is a joy to live with our God. Go and share the good news. Let us celebrate a life lived well with God. Amen.